This might look like a bag, but I promise you it's a tote bag. And it's a tote bag for your iron, which actually doubles up as an ironing pad as well. Let me just show you. You can open it up and it comes in two sizes. And you can see I've got a standard iron in here. Now this is something that every tutor should have. It comes as in a pattern format. It comes as the full size, which we're going to show you today, and it comes in a baby one. So if you come to classes, it's also a great thing to make. It is a brilliant thing to do as um, a gift as well. It is a pattern, so I'm not going to be able to give you workshop notes. Uh, and the pattern does come complete with this iron stuffy. Um, the brilliant thing too is that although you have to buy the pattern, you can buy this separately. And our friends at Creative Quilting are going to allow us to sell you this by the piece, although they have it by the yard, so you can buy masses. The pattern asks you to draw on this iron um, sheet. Now, I have drawn this in pencil. I've drawn it in grey because I've actually used, when we come to the uh, piece that I've sewn, I have sewn with grey thread on the top, so matching thread. So don't be too cavalier about your marking lines. You will be seeing them and they will be the sewing lines. You are asked to make a template. The template sounds as though it's a funny size. I've made it out of, out of uh, paper here, but actually it's an A4 sheet. You sew your top to bottom of the A4 sheet and then they ask you to give you this other width. You need to mark up in the centre of this piece. Now a really easy way to do that is give yourself a centre. So I took this to the iron and I quartered it. I gave myself, you can see, some really sharp creases. Open this up, do the same with your paper and you have a way of lining that paper up right in the centre. I marked the four corners. I kept this, because as you can see I've made more than one. So we pop this aside, but I marked the four corners and then with my trusty ruler I've marked up this rectangle. You are then asked to mark up a larger rectangle on the outside. This will be your cutting line. So mark this up again really carefully. And you are also asked to draw, or on the, on the um, instructions, you've got a dotted line here. This is an orientation line only. So what I did was I took my ruler and I marked in the outside section here. So you can draw in this section and you can write in it because it will be cut off. But you will otherwise, if you don't make little marks here and little notes to yourself, you could get confused because there's going to be quite a few little lines. So there's a mark on the outside here and there's another one here. You're then asked to, to draw a little marker inside. As you can see, this gives you a funny angle here. And again, on the instructions, it gives you an A to Z of those. This one is marked J, this is marked I. And I do think it's worth you doing that. Although I have made more than one of these, it's just a fail safe, because it's really easy to get cavalier about this. You draw a line from there to the corner, and again from there to this mark, which was marked L. And then you're gonna draw a line from here to the corner. All of this is really clear on the diagrams, but just knowing where you're headed actually when you're making the first one is, um, I hope, takes the confusion out. So I have drawn all those lines in. You're then, and then I can move this one aside. You would then take the same piece and you are asked to layer this up on two bits of wadding and a piece of fabric. Now this fabric is gonna be seen, so it can be quite beautiful. This is my lovely fabric here. I've used plain fabric here because it's calico, but I'm going to come back to that because I'm going to make it a bit prettier afterwards. So we layer it all up, put some pins in. Again, try not to be too cavalier. I put the pins on my sewing lines so that any holes in the um, in this silver um, fabric would be taken up with my sewing. You need to set your sewing machine up with the walking foot and I increase the stitch length to three, 
which is my quilting size, because you've got two layers of wadding in here. You could also put some Insule Bright in here. I'm not sure I would put two layers of that because it comes slightly thicker, but it, um, just two layers of cotton wadding is fine. I, I, I set my sewing machine up with grey thread on the top. And remember that the thread in the bobbin is going to show. So make sure that matches. I've made this the same colour as this. On this one, I had a lovely green thread, so it is going to matter. You are asked to then test, and I really do always recommend this, when you set your machine up, test it. You're going to say, I've got nothing to test it on. Yes, you have. You've got an inch and a half all the way round. So um, somewhere on this one, I did a little test piece that was here, right near me, just to check that my machine was happy. It has a quilting needle in it, and as I said, I moved the stitch length up to three. So I did, once I'm happy with the, the tension, I started sewing here. So you're going to sew all the way around this inner rectangle, stop with the needle down and pivot, and you come back here. I then, when I came back to the beginning, headed off into the corner. You're going to do that diagonal line. You've got three more diagonal lines to do. If you start in the corners here, remember to bring that bottom thread up through your work. You do not want a bird's nest on the back. This is going to be beautiful on the other side as well as this side. You're going to see and use both sides. So this the three diagonals were next. And then these ones, you can just start from outside the cutting line and come down here, pivot and off. And then again here pivot and off. So all of these have tails on. So that's your sewing done, with the exception of your outside cutting line. Now this, for some reason, they to ask you to sew just inside this outside line. If you wobble and you end up cutting on it, or sewing on it rather, don't fret. You're going to cut this off, but you're going to cut it off leaving your stitches in place. Remember that. So once you've trimmed all the way around there, you're, the only other thing you're going to do is you are asked to mark to make a fancy corner. And you're, one of the things I thought you might need to, to see is I'm going to choose an arbitrary sum. I'm going to say four inches. I'm not sure what the pattern says. So there's four inches. In order to make the corner correct, all you do is mark put any of these lines on your ruler, on your work, along that line of stitching, which means with your rotary cutter, you can slice through here, and these are the bits you take off. So that makes your lovely shape. So coming back to here, the instructions, I've got a pin in here for traveling. So there we go with it done. We're going to add binding, it's continuous binding and the instructions are really good on that. We're going to add uh, handles. Now the only change I made to the pattern, uh, being a tutor, you kind of look at patterns sometimes and tweak them because you think it's easier. And it's easier sometimes when we're showing you rather than writing patterns too. So here's my handle. The only change that I made was that I put the handles on before I put the binding on because for me that got you put them on like this and then it's all hidden inside if you put them on afterwards you've got top stitching to do and I don't like doing extra top stitching don't need to do that we're going to add you're asked to put on a little loop again this um, suggestion is this is out of elastic yeah well I didn't have any elastic but I'd have lots of these little bits of ribbon that come off the inside of clothes particularly at Christmas because I was given a couple of new sweaters which was really nice and you want to choose some buttons now these were a selection of buttons that I found we could have used any of them these are just really fun fancy buttons that came um, and so you are shown how to fold this um, but this is the way the tote goes you pop your iron in there, and don't forget this is now a beautiful ironing surface. I think every tutor should have one, and when I've tidied this up, I'm going to make this much more beautiful by putting on some of these little Russian dollies. I'm going to iron them on, 
just with a bit of heat and bond, and this will make them lovely. So next time you see Jenny, ask her to show you her ironing tote. <laughs>